I'll keep my remarks short. I know that we have a lot of speakers. Um, and afterward, of course, there's another Zoom that I invite you all to called Couches Against Trump, better known as CATS. If you're going to accuse someone of having sex with a couch, you better have video. You sad diet Mountain Dew drinking couch humping dolphin porn aficionado. And before you tell me he didn't really a couch, spare me. I grew up in New Jersey in the 80s where everyone had a couch in their basement. And I know a couch when I see one. Now, I would call her up here to come and speak that then I think I'd have to sleep on the couch tonight. So. Oof, bad line from J.D. Vance considering. Um, well, a rumor that was going around, a rumor that started on X, formerly known as Twitter, about how he uh, likes to partake in uh, coitus with uh, sectionals. Now, this was a false claim that JD Vance uh, had sex with a couch, but it's probably going to haunt him for the rest of this campaign. But where did it come from? How did this uh, troll attack start? Well, it did lead to multiple fact checks, which only made the situation worse for JD Vance. But let's get to the very beginning. So it started with an ex user by the name of Rick Rude Scalves, uh, who posted this joke to the site last week. Quote, can't say for sure, but he might be the first VP pick to have admitted in a New York Times bestseller to effing an inside out latex glove shoved between two couch cushions. Vance Hillbilly Elegy, pages 179 to 181. Now, I actually read Hillbilly Elegy well before JD Vance was even on my radar as a politician. And I was like, was I stoned when I read it? Because I don't remember <laughs> reading that. I would have remembered that. But it did lead to a hilarious fact check by the Associated Press. So I want to show you that. No, JD Vance did not have sex with a couch. Now, that situation only made things worse. Uh, in it, uh, according to the AP fact check, while a PDF search of the book yielded 10 references to couch or couches, at no time is the furniture engaged in coitus. Uh, moreover, the AP noted that the words sofa and glove do not appear anywhere in the book. So it was a false accusation. This was not in his book. But again, the fact check itself didn't really help JD Vance because I didn't even know about this allegation until I saw that fact check. And uh, now the Associated Press has deleted the fact checking article altogether. If you yeah. go to the URL, the link directs you to a deleted article with a note that says, quote, this story did not go through our standard editing process and has been removed. So before I get to the fun memes that arose from this uh, troll attack, <laughs> John, what are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, three of my favorite parts of that, that they put up the fact check and then took it down. I think I and most people reasonably will think, oh, they found new evidence. Like that's the reason you take it down. Oh, they found. Oh, there was actually. He didn't say sofa. He said chase or whatever. Like uh, that's not what it is. Um, two. I don't. I don't know if a lot of people have referenced this. Is it possible for us to put the original tweet back up? My favorite part of it is very subtle, and I'm sure a lot of people noticed it, but not everyone did. But if we could put that up, you'll see okay. he, he he includes the supposed section from the thing, and then he does his citation. And he says, Vance Hillbilly Elegy, pages 179 to 181, implying that the section where he describes his couch sex is three pages long. <laughs> it's not a reference, it's not an aside, it's a subplot of the book. And that's what I love. And three, I just want to be very clear because I care a lot about journalism and journalistic ethics. Mm. People need to stop saying that he has not had sex with a couch. We cannot say that. We can only say that he didn't describe it in the book. It is entirely possible that he has had sex with couches. And I would say that whether or not he had sex with couches before this meme started, you know he's looking at couches in a different way now and wondering, <laughs> is there something to this? The chance that he gets through the next month without having sex with a couch is maybe 10% at maximum. That's my thought. What do you think? Okay. Um, that's hilarious. I, I don't know how much pleasure any guy can get from humping a couch, but I mean, anything's possible. You know, we live in America. It's the, the land of opportunity, the land Put of dreams. Put your back into it. I mean. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. All right. But putting that aside, let me just make one 
serious point. Let me be the Debbie Downer before we get to the fun memes, okay? Look, it is concerning that if someone makes an allegation and then does like a BS citation, <laughs> most people are like, "Oh, well, there's a citation; it must be true." Like mm, that that does worry me a little bit, you know. You think you that people? What percentage of people do you think actually believe that he did it? I mean, look, I don't know about it in this context at all. Uh, look, uh, I'm going to be honest. I really don't care whether he effed a couch or not. Like, I think it's funny, but I don't care. And so the only thing that I saw at first was the Associated Press headline. And I just thought yeah. it was hilarious, but I don't care enough <laughs> to actually look into it. You get what I'm saying? But yeah, like, I, get you. I, I think that it is telling when it comes to actual serious issues. Sure. Because I have seen shows just flat out lie about things. And then have a BS citation and people just take their word for it. And it's like, mm, please, like, and look, I don't blame most people for not looking into it. People are busy and they're supposed to be able to trust news organizations, but always double check, okay? If someone makes a citation or if someone posts a link alleging that a reporting says something specific, read the piece for yourself and see if it actually says what they claim it says. Anyway, let's move on to the fun. Apologies for being the Debbie Downer here. Mm -hmm. So uh, this obviously spurred all sorts of fun memes. It was one of my favorite developments on X, which I usually never have any positive things to say about developments on the platform. But nonetheless, here's one of the memes I appreciated. <laughs> so uh, for <laughs> it, it shows the Ashley Furniture logo. <laughs> 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 and on the first one, it just says Ashley and JD Vance seems uninterested. Second one says Ashley Furniture and he's giving it a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, but this one's definitely my favorite. Let's go to the next one. When I get that feeling, I want sectional healing. <laughs> Come on. Come on. That's not bad. All right, one more. Um, there's the iconic uh, Obama art that says hope. Uh, then you have Trump, it says hate. Biden, it says heal. Kamala, it says grow. And then with JD Vance, it's just simply couch. <laughs> so, you know, people were having fun with it. Um, and look, I think that there should be a fun element to politics. And I, I don't take this too seriously. It is interesting, though, how it just took like one guy messing around uh, to have this unfounded rumor like spread like wildfire on social yeah. media. It's it's pretty incredible. Like I think campaigns tend to like overthink their strategy in some aspects. In this case, it shows how easy it is to like spread a pretty toxic rumor about someone, which is I don't think mm -hmm. necessarily a good thing, but at least it's a fun rumor. Yeah, like I don't think anyone's fun. losing sleep over this. Yeah, I don't I don't think that they are. Look, I will say from my own personal experience, I saw a reference to it. I I believed it for a minute only because I haven't read Hillbilly Elegy because I can't conceive of why I would. But it seems like the sort of thing like he's talking about drug use and wild stuff. Maybe there's a reference to it. I don't know. But I within a minute had seen a fact check of it. I think I think the vast vast majority of people making jokes about it just think it's funny. I don't think that yeah. they think it's real. I think that they think it's funny. And I think that basically everything else about JD Vance is so awful, like unrelentingly awful, that it's fun to have some other like color to paint with, you know? Mm -hmm. that it's not just talking about how he he like would go further than Trump in trying to like yeet us into the handmaid's tale. Like we can also talk about this stuff. I, I like that. Yeah, I agree. So Business Insider caught up with the gentleman who started the rumor in the first place. And they're not identifying him by name. Ever since this whole thing kind of blew up, he's tried to you know, protect his social media accounts. He didn't expect all of this attention. He doesn't like all of the attention. Um, but with that in mind, you know, he did talk to Business Insider and they're referring to him as Rick, a pseudonym. And he said the following. 
I have really enjoyed thinking about his team and all of the idiots associated with him having to grapple with this. I think by the time the Associated Press thing came out, I was talking to one of my sisters and saying, "Oh yeah, Trump is already calling him a couch effer," which <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I would. By the way, Trump is the kind of guy who is like easily disgusted. Yeah, and I I do wonder if he knows about. All the people clowning Vance on allegedly humping a couch. And if he has seen it, has he considered dropping Vance from the ticket? Because that is the kind of thing he would drop someone from the ticket from. I think, look, I I think he's in a difficult position in terms of like dropping her from the ticket. But I think there were already so many things. Maybe this is better from his point of view to have them focusing on this rather than like destroying any chances he has of having women switch over to vote for him or whatever. Um, But I do think it is just more like Trump wanted someone like one in the talk about who he was gonna pick. One of the big things was I don't want someone who's gonna create scandals for me. Like I don't want someone who's gonna be making my life harder. And that's all JD Vance has done all of these appearances and his positions and his votes. and, And then on top of it, he brings mockery to the campaign, a campaign that's already being tarred as weird. And now you have the couch thing and the dolphin thing. I it, I think it's tough times. I don't expect him to drop him. I think that he would see that as being cowardly or a retreat. Uh, but I think that he probably should. I think that he should drop Vance and then the Republicans should drop him. I think that's in <laughs> everyone's best interests. I don't think that's going to happen, but I still think there's a possibility Trump might drop Vance. I'm about 40 50 on that. We'll see. Uh, one more comment from Rick. Uh, so, Rick said he viewed Vance from a place of irreverence, if not outright disrespect, in part because he shares an upbringing not dissimilar to the hard knock childhood Vance describes in Hillbilly Elegy. The political conclusions he drew from those experiences, though, differ markedly. From Vance's, he said. So, not a fan of Vance. And we're talking about an individual who apparently had a similar experience growing up. And look, I do feel sympathy for what Vance went through. I mean, his mother was severely addicted to drugs, his father wasn't around. That's not an easy upbringing to deal with. We're talking about a part of the country he was raised in that, you know, lost manufacturing jobs and suffered economic devastation. It's just unfortunate. You know what his takeaways were from that upbringing, and as I said on the show yesterday, I think it's important for him to maybe deal with some of that childhood trauma that it doesn't seem like he's really dealt with at all. Um, you know, I, I'm not a psychologist, so I probably shouldn't even be commenting on it. But I do think that some of his beliefs and some of his actions. Um, indicate that he hasn't really addressed with like a, an actual professional the trauma that he went through as a kid and that was definitely trauma like reading that book it's a difficult yeah. thing to go through you know uh yeah probably um i can like intellectually acknowledge that i fundamentally don't care what happens to him because he's a terrible <laughs> person who wants to do a lot of harm to a lot of people um but i will say while we're talking about things that are difficult to go through uh he has a bunch of young kids who now have to go through being elevated into the MAGA movement because their dad had a midlife crisis and decided he wanted to become a fascist. I think that's gonna be hard for them and then they're probably gonna need. See, that's the cycle of trauma that we can have at times. Maybe maybe one of those kids will write a book someday. Cycle of trauma is very much real, so that's not a bad point. Um, Yeah, I agree with you on that. 